that is just a little tune that comes to you from Mr. Mustachio with the Zoom Pod Track P4 that he gifted me. Ooh, yeah, I'm not going to look at the stuff over. So, if you just listened to the episode that was about 15 minutes long, where I was in the garage and not in my usual studio, which is my bathroom, then we are now about 15 minutes later than what we were then, and I am chilling out in the bathtub now, it's a little cold outside, drained the AA batteries in my new recording thing, but I did find out I do have a charger that will work for this. Like I said, you're learning with me. Bear with me. I'm not being one of these guys that brings out a new podcast, like I said in the last episode, that spends months creating uh, a cover photo for it and getting the sound just perfect. I need to get this out to you. It helps me. Hopefully it helps you. And for those of you that have given a donation in one way or another, thank you very, very much. The first one of you that did something for me to help keep this going, actually to get this going, was the leader of the Russellites. Don't forget about him. Because if it wasn't for him, we would have been shut down after, like, my 10th episode. Not even sure if it would have been that far. And then I had some solid listeners that purchased some decals. And then I had a very, very solid friend and listener donated this new piece of equipment I'm learning on, as well as my son donated this microphone to me. So... Thank you for everybody, or thank you to everyone that has done something to help me keep this going and to make it better. And, as well, thank you to all of those that have you listened, the, of you that have listened since the very first episode. If you haven't listened to the first episode, go back, listen from the beginning. This shit show has been an ongoing learning session for me. for my listeners. I would not be still going with it. It would have burnt out and died. So, thank you to everyone that listens. Thank you to everyone that has tossed a donation in your own way. And remember, if you can't do something monetarily to help, like the episodes. Share the episodes. Whatever you're listening to it on subscribe jump onto youtube subscribe there jump over onto the facebook page give that a like and subscribe to that everything helps uh i do this more for me than anything else but if i'm entertaining you guys it keeps me going so on that note like i said at the end of our 15 or 16 minute episode that I just recorded over my garage because it's warming up. I'm going to touch base on one of the stories that I tried to record here a couple of weeks ago that for some reason didn't go through. And on that note, I actually need to move around and have a look and make sure we are recording. And yeah, we still are recording. So that means I'm learning. I'm getting better. Oh, thanks for the applause. (laughs) Well, so it would have been about this time. About 16, 17, no, 17 years ago, because me and the old lady have been together 17 years in April. So about 17 years ago, this time of year, give or take a month or two, had mushrooms. <laughs> Big fucking surprise, right? <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, you guys can hear the water.
are slobbing around. <laughs> Don't care. I'm comfortable enjoying my bath with my drink in hand. Talking to you guys. So, sit back, shut up, and listen. Because I'm going to tell you a story. So, I don't really remember how I ended up over at Funk's house that night. Oh, his trailer. It wasn't a fucking house. It was a trailer. I left my trailer park, my uppity trailer park, and went to his scuzzy trailer park. Whatever, trailer park's trailer park. We're all scumbongs. And uh, you can take me out of the trailer park, but you'll never take the trailer park out of me. Oh, yeah. But uh, I showed up over there with, I think it was then Funk. You may want to correct me if we ever do get you on here when things finally settle down with you. You may want to correct me, but uh, I think I showed up with an ounce or an ounce and a half of mushrooms. And me and you downed a bunch, and Fathead and Andrew were there. And uh, Andrew and Fathead, for some reason, said they weren't going to have any. So we had some. And then, uh, and by some, I mean probably an eight bag to a quarter bag ourselves. And for those of you that don't know how that weighs up, an eight bag is three and a half grams. A quarter bag is seven grams. A half ounce is fourteen. So I think you can do the math from there. But it was a decent amount of mushrooms we were doing that night. And then Mr. Funk got a phone call or a text message, I don't remember, from some girls that he knew, and they were partying at one of the other bars in town. So they wanted us to come out. So we figured we'd go, and instead of jumping in a cab to go out there, we figured well, we just took a bunch of mushrooms. Let's go on an adventure. So we started to walk all the way across town. Um, I'm sure you guys remember the story about Captain getting onto the back of my mini chopper with me, and me losing him somewhere across town. Well, this walk that me and Funk were about to embark on with a belly full of mushrooms was about the same distance. Maybe a little bit further, actually, because, uh, yeah, a little bit further. His trailer park was a little bit further out than the one I was living in at that time. So we start our walk, and we're doing all right, we're bullshitting. I think I was having some drinks as well. And... We got about halfway there, and the mushrooms started to hit pretty hard. We were hitting, we, we weren't quite peaking yet, but they were starting to hit. And if you've ever done mushroom, mushrooms, you know how when you kind of get a peak, and then it eases off, and then you get your first peak real hard. Well, we were before that first peak real hard. We were about halfway to the bar. So we just enjoyed our fucking walk. And we're walking through the baseball diamonds and goofing around in the field. Just having a great fucking walk. Well, we walk into this bar. And the girls flag us over. We go and sit down. And they knew we were doing mushrooms as soon as they saw us. So they pin us in the back corner of this booth. So that we can't fucking get out. Order us a couple of drinks. And I think it was Ryan Cokes. Well. More than likely it was Ryan Cokes and maybe a shot or two of tequila, because, well, that's the way we rolled. <laughs> and, uh, we were sitting there, and we are just having a good visit, and enjoying the music, and then all of a sudden, the first big peak started to hit us. And, well, it started to hit me anyway. And I'm trying to, trying to handle it, I'm trying to handle it, I'm trying to handle it. I can't do it, and I look over at Funk, and well, the motherfucker, he's squirming too, the same way I am, just can't handle being cornered in the back of this booth. If you've been in a lifestyle like the stories I've told you, you understand being cornered anywhere is not fun. And then, add 
mushrooms and alcohol to it. It's really not a good time. So, I climbed underneath the table and started squirming. And then we were heading out. Well, I was heading the fuck out. Well, the girls saw this. And they didn't want Funk climbing underneath. And if you don't understand that, I need you to Google a meme. It might come up, it might not. But the meme says that was the earth. The exact moment he realized the load was too big to swallow. And that is Funk. The picture of the guy about to spit up a massive cum load. That's Funk. If not, I will actually put that meme up on the Facebook page. But he's not a small guy. Never was. So they didn't want him climbing through like I did. So they let us out, and we told them we were just going to go outside, walk around the parking lot, get a little bit of fresh air. Well, we got outside, and then I don't know if he has more memory or not, but I don't really. I kind of zoned out or blacked out or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And then the next thing I know, we're like halfway to my trailer park on the other side of town from where his was. And... Heading for my place. <coughs> well, like I said, we were doing some mushrooms. And we're walking through the parking lot of this uh, apartment building. And all of a sudden, I got the massive, massive urge to have a shit. And I don't know if any of you have ever pooped on mushrooms or not. But if you haven't, I am going to suggest, don't do it, unless you are a person that enjoys doing mushrooms, and then if you are, eat some x lax at the same time that you eat some mushrooms. Weigh the x lax up with your mushrooms, or better yet, make yourself an x lax chocolate bar with mushrooms inside of it. Well, that might be the way to go. Because when you have to poop when you're high on mushrooms, it's a little weird. It's a little out there. So anyway, we're walking through this parking lot, and I get this urge that I have to poop. Well, and if you've listened to some of the episodes, I am not the type of guy to shit my pants. So what do I do? pull my pants down, squat in the middle of this parking lot wearing my bully's shoes. I will never forget this. This is how fucking <laughs> I had stole my bully's pair of shoes. The most comfortable pair of shoes I've ever had in my life. They were white Fila's. I love my white shoes. Always have. That'll never change. And being that I rode a Dyna and wore white shoes, man, did I take some shit. But I was rocking the white shoes long before Sons of Anarchy and Jax Teller. So, fuck you. <laughs> but anyways, so I remember I'm squatted down in this parking lot and Funk is walking away from me and he's, he stops and he turns around and he looks at me and he's like, what are you doing? And I can just imagine what he's seeing in his state. His bro is squatted in the middle of a parking lot having a dump, and all I can think is, fuck me, these are some comfortable shoes. And then all of a sudden, everything inside me starts pushing this turd out of me. And wow, what a fucking feeling. Like I said, if you have never done mushrooms and pooped on mushrooms, you'd never understand it. I can't even explain it. And this isn't one of those things like the meth explanation I gave to my oldest son, but what meth is like. I actually want you, if you're one of those people that does the drugs, I want you to make yourself an x lax mushroom chocolate bar. Just so you can see what it's like to poop on mushrooms, because it's, it's something different. 
But anyways, we continue walking after I have my poop. And I'm staring at these shoes, thinking to myself as I poop, these are the most comfortable shoes in the world. And the poop starts to come out, and I'm like, holy fuck, that was intense. I think I took my sock off, wiped my ass. Pretty sure it was my sock that wiped my ass with that time as well. Left my pile of shit and my uh, shitty toilet paper sock sitting in the middle of the parking lot. Man, for those of you that are listening and have never met me, I must sound like I was an absolute fucking mess. Well, guess what? You would be 189.3% correct. I was. I was an absolute fucking mess. But that's what made me who I am. (laughs) So we kept walking, and we ended up at my place. And I got some coolers. I don't know where we picked them up along the way. But I stuffed them into my uh, my hoodie pocket, and they weren't twist off. So I grabbed the can opener out of my drawer and stuffed that in my hoodie pocket as well. And then I'm not sure, but somehow we ended up getting from my trailer park to... Uh, just one second. Somebody is at my door. Yes, I'm in the bathtub and somebody's at my door. That's right, I'm in the bathtub recording an episode and made very well sure that my daughter didn't need into the bathroom. But now, here I am, in the bathtub, talking... Oh, we can hear my daughter peeing. Shut up! (laughs) No, I literally hate you. I'm going to hang myself. Oh, we love you, baby girl. No! (laughs) Nobody needs to hear me pee. That's someone's fucked up. Kink, Dad. <laughs> you are correct. That is someone's fucked up kink out there. Yeah, but and, and you, that, strangers can listen to that. That means strange weirdos just heard me pee. You are not wrong. But <gasps> that is also why I made sure that you had ample opportunity. I didn't have to pee then. <laughs> Spoken like a true child. <laughs> I'm being bullied in my own house. You are not being bullied in your own house. Well, you're bullying me right now. Oh, you bullied me last night by sneaking into my bedroom when you thought I was sleeping and stole my bottle of water. Because I was thirsty. Yeah, and then when you bumped into my leg and I said hello, you... I ignored you. Yeah, you ignored me. Yeah, because I didn't want you to know for sure that yeah, then uh, I took my sleep mask off, and my bottle of water was gone. I knew full well who had done what. Yeah. Um, and he was, oh, I didn't have to shit. We can all, I'll go upstairs to do that. <laughs> yeah, please. Well, I don't even have to poop. That's a lie. It was just a fart. It just happened. Anyways. Love you, baby girl. I'm going to bed. I love you. That is my daughter. <laughs> so where was I now? Um, oh, yeah, I was uh, telling you guys that we stopped at my house and I was I had to take take the can opener out of my. I'm just gonna open the shower curtain door here, or the shower curtain again, so that I can actually have a little bit of light. In but yeah, we uh, stopped my house somehow. I grabbed a can opener because it was the only bottle opener I had. Because it had a bottle opener on the back of my can opener. And then I'm not sure, but I think we may have taken a cab back over to Funk's house that night. And well, if you remember back to the beginning of this story, I said that I showed up with a decent amount of mushrooms. And me and Funk did not eat them all. Well, when we got back to the house... Fathead and Andrew could not be found. And the mushroom bag was on the coffee table with 
quite a few less mushrooms left in it. So we had to go looking around the house. Well, we found a fathead and Andrew in a puddle. <laughs> that is pretty much the only way that me and Funk have been able to explain to people what state they were in that night. Is they were in a puddle. Then we visited, listened to some music, and I started walking home with my coolers in my pocket and my can opener. And my beautiful wife had, uh, I don't know if this would have been end of March, beginning of April, I would assume. So, not quite 17 years ago now. But, uh, we. Her. I was walking home and I gave her a call. So yeah, it would have been after March, after the middle of March. So towards the end of March at least. And uh, I gave her a call after what she was doing because I was kind of out in the neck of the woods and didn't was really not looking forward to the walk home. Well, she just happened to have her friend over and she was able to leave her friend there at the house to watch my oldest son while she came and picked me up on the side of the road and drove me home from her trailer park to my trailer park <laughs> after I had left Funk's trailer park. That's right, like I said, we are a bunch of trailer park trash and you can take us out of the trailer but you'll never take the trailer out of us. And I own that shit and I'm proud of it. So she picks me up as I'm walking past her trailer park and we're talking and I fire my empty bottle out the window I think and I reach into my hoodie pocket and pull out another bottle <laughs> and then I pull a can opener out to <laughs> take the fucking lid off of it <laughs> like I do not know how my wife has ended up with me and put up with my crap. What are you doing, Danica? Do you need in the poop or what? No, I already did that. Okay, well, Dad's trying to finish this episode up. Can you, so, can you please stop banging on the door? I forgot how to breathe when I was pooping. Oh, she forgot how to breathe when she was pooping. <laughs> Love you too, baby girl. Good night. <laughs> She's dying to be on the podcast, but she won't tell Dad that. And when Dad offers, dog. oh, now she's yelling at my dog, calling him a dickhead dog. So, anyways, I pull out another ball from my hoodie, and uh, man, does this thing pick up the background so noises. Something fierce. I gotta figure out a way around that. Maybe there's a setting on there. But, uh, she picks me up. I pull a fresh cooler out after I throw a bottle out the window. Pull the can opener out, crack another one. And we're talking. I, I had loved my life for a long time before then. But when we first met, I was an absolute mess as you've kind of heard from the stories, but one day we'll get her on here and we'll have her tell her first impressions of me and my home and my friends and everything. But, uh, yeah, she took me home and dropped me off and I went in the house after I said goodnight and thank you and told her we set a date for the next day. <laughs> And I remember her best friend, who's actually married to Hillbilly now. <laughs> one of my best friends married one of her best friends. And I remember her saying to my wife the next day, she's like, what are you doing? He is a mess because I was so fucking hungover that I couldn't hardly lift my head off the picnic table. But whatever. <laughs> Here we are, 17 years later. I put her through some shit. 
and if you don't believe that, listen to the stories about when we went to Vegas. And she's got some more stories to come. Spacely, I know you're listening, brother. <laughs> what did I say to that cop? But don't say my last name. <laughs> Alrighty. So, I think I've had about enough time on the mic tonight. I'm feeling a lot better. Pumped out a couple of episodes tonight. Because I, I've been trying this one a week thing. And, man. It just doesn't feel right. Those of you that do it, good on you. But I will forever and always be consistently inconsistent. You may not hear an episode from me for two or three weeks. Then you may get two or three within a day or two. I don't know. We'll see. But like, comment share if for no other reason but to get the algorithms working for this podcast to let other people hear this shit show and if this is the first one you've ever heard I suggest you go all the way back to the beginning and listen to them all because there is a new podcast coming out I'm going to give a shout out it's called Amateur Christian. One of my best friends, one of the men that pulled me out of hell. That saved my marriage and saved my life. Is firing up a new podcast called Amateur Christian. The first episode, I believe it was, I talked about a motorcycle trip to Fort St. John. And that trip to Fort St. John was the beginning of what saved my marriage and saved my life. And hopefully we will get that finished up on one of his episodes. So, if you're listening to this and you don't think that's going to be something you might want to hear is that ep- or that podcast, if you want to hear the end of that story, you're going to have to jump over from Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy and check out Amateur or Amateur Christian podcast when it comes out. Sounds like it's being released beginning of March, but we'll see. But there is already a Facebook page. So go over there, like it, cause guaranteed you're gonna want to hear an episode or two because me and him have some great stories together. Maybe not quite as fucked up as what you're getting used to hearing from me, but you might get to see a different side of me over on that podcast as well. And on that note, don't walk a mile in my shoes because that won't impress me. Live 30 seconds in my head and you will understand why I am a messed up northern boy and these are my tales and again I'm going to put it out there if you have any interest in any kind of merch let me know what you're interested in and I will look into pricing and you can reach out to me Bob's Bob's on Facebook or Tales of a Messed Up Northern Boy message the page or send an email all lowercase Tales of a messed up northern boy at gmail.com. Or if you personally know me, like some of you do, probably six out of the seven of my listeners personally know me, send me an email. Tell me what you'd be interested in doing to help me out. And again, on that note, I just want to give a huge, huge thank you to. Mr. Mustachio, for the latest donation. Muchly appreciated, my friend. And your free decal or something will be on the way. Well, not really free, because the donation you gave me was far from free, my friend. But thank you. 
much, much appreciated.